Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. We're gonna steal some yeast. Yes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. This, should I say, is brought to you by a subscriber. They said, how do you do that? So, sadly, things have changed a lot. It's a lot harder to steal yeast than it used to be. Um, Bells, Bells is a great example. They used to tell people how to steal their yeast so that they could reproduce their beer as close to possible, you know, from a home brewing standard from that of a massive brewery system. But what we're gonna do today, and I'm gonna sadly bum you out a little bit on the stealing yeast, but we have this lovely Mary Monk's triple from Weyerbacher, if I can say that correctly. And it is bottle conditioned, and I'm already stirring it up a little, I can see it. There is yeast on the bottom, and it's very hard to see, but there is a good amount of yeast on the bottom. I am simply going to pour this beer by popping it open with my little black and tan turtle here that can opener or bottle opener, sorry, not can opener. We're going to pour this out and you're going to want to pour it very slowly. And then I'm going to give you some conditions to where and how you can steal yeast. Okay. And there we go. And we're gonna leave that little splash in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. There is a little bit of beer. And we're gonna shake it around in both directions and get it all upset, should we say. I'm gonna give you some disclaimers. After I take this, and I'm just gonna simply take my jar. And here I got a lot of yeast that's all mixed up in there. I'm gonna dump that in there. Okay, I'll make this seem very simple at first, and then I'll explain. It's a nice little stir bar. Drop it in here, put it in here. And we're gonna set it up on top of here. There we go. Okay, here's the disclaimers. First of all, the majority of the beer you buy has a little bit of yeast in it. Where it doesn't have yeast is where it's been pasteurized, which means all the yeast has been killed. It's been heavily, heavily, heavily filtered. There is no yeast. And even if it's just lightly filtered, trying to get the yeast out of there is gonna be a small nightmare. So you're left with pretty much the best choice of getting yeast from bottle conditioned beer. This one is heavily advertised as bottle conditioned. Smells nice too. The yeast in the bottom is used to ferment the beer, which is good. Now for the disclaimers. First of all, Hefeweizen. You're going, oh, Hefeweizen, they always have yeast in the beer. Yeah, some breweries, the yeast in the beer is the yeast that was used to brew it. Great. Some breweries, they put a different yeast in it when they go to bottle condition, or they have actually not bottle conditioned, and they're putting dead yeast in there just to help give it that nice yeasty flavor and get it all up in there like it's supposed to be unfiltered. So the yeast in it may not be the yeast that was used to actually get the beer to where it finished, should we say, whether flavor or esters or anything else. Other things, if the bottle is pasteurized, I don't care if it's bottle conditioned or not, if it's pasteurized, everything in here is dead. If it is shipped, stored at high temperatures, it's dead. If you buy it and you put it in your car and you leave it in your car while you go shopping, chances are it's dead. Unless it's the middle of the winter and your car is freezing, then you might be okay as long as the bottle doesn't freeze. So there is a good condi good chance, should we say, that the yeast I just put in here is useless. We will only know once I've gone through trying to create a starter with it. And that's what I did. And I'm gonna do multiple starters to get it up to where I need, because I only get a little bit. I didn't get very much, you know, and Bell's used to show you how to do like five or six bottles or four or six bottles, something like that. I have my nice power adapter with multiple USBs. I have my nice USB system here. I'm gonna turn it on here. Got my little stir bar in here and it should start spinning. There it goes. And that's gonna help to keep the wart nice and oxygenated. And it's gonna help pulling in the air and getting the yeast moving around. And hopefully by tomorrow, I'll have a little more yeast. If so, then I'll do another starter. I'll put this in the fridge for about a day, let it chill down, separate, dump off the extra beer move that yeast into another starter and keep going. All this is, is basically, I have some dry malt extract. I put 
0.875 of an ounce. So 0.875 of an ounce of dry malt extract. I put about a quarter to an eighth of a teaspoon of some yeast nutrient and eight ounces of spring water. That's all I did. I boiled it, boiled it for about five minutes, kept stirring it. You don't want to boil crazy. You just want to get a nice simmer where it's bubbling. Stir it up, make sure it's all nice and you know in there. And then I let it cool down to about 70 degrees. I put it in the jar. I took this, I let it get nice and cold. I waited for the yeast to kind of solidify or you know, kind of become a little bit of a cake on the bottom. I poured the beer out. I had a little bit of beer left. I left about a, maybe a quarter of an ounce, maybe close to a half an ounce. Shake it all up, get it all out of there in both directions so it breaks it all up. I dump it into the yeast starter or into the wort, sorry, or the starter, whatever you want to call it. And now I'm going to let it sit like this for approximately 24 hours. If it starts looking good, then I know I'm viable. And I can take that and repitch and repitch until I build up a nice yeast. Once I get a nice yeast going, then I can look out and see if I can find out what their recipe is, or I can create my own, or I can use a different recipe for whatever beer I want that has that nice. And when you smell and taste any kind of Belgian beers, especially, you know, triples or anything else in those neck of the woods, should we say, you're going to get certain esters and th certain things that are only possible by that type of yeast. So using that yeast, I can get some of those like flavors into another beer. It's just a matter of time, patience, and trying it again and again. Sadly, about four or five years ago, bottle conditioning was still very, very common. Now, bottle conditioning is very uncommon, at least from what I see. Beers coming from Europe, sometimes are bottle conditioned, but you gotta hope that it was kept cool. It wasn't allowed to get warm. It wasn't pasteurized. There's just a lot of variables in there that can't guarantee that you're going to be able to reproduce that yeast. There have been some beers I've gotten from other countries and have been able to reproduce the yeast, which is awesome and I've used it in beers. And what I would recommend is once you reproduce the yeast, knowing that you can't guarantee that that is yeast or something else going on, <laughs> just do a small batch, do like a one gallon batch. If it comes out great, great, go on to five gallons. If it doesn't come out great, toss it, move on, try again, or try capturing yeast from maybe your second favorite beer and go from there. But we'll keep going. I'll let you know how this works out. For now, I'm gonna enjoy the beer. Very nice, quite a bit of citrus in a triple. Okay, as you can see, that's the yeast sediment on the bottom. That is from our second starter. I'll explain what I did. Just as I mentioned, I was gonna do a starter after you saw us take the last little quarter of an ounce, maybe swirl it around, shake it up, get all that yeast out of there. I added it, I added eight ounces of spring water to point eight, seven, five ounces of dry malt extract. Got it to a boil, let it simmer for about 10 minutes, stirred it up, dropped in a little bit more than an eighth, maybe closer to a quarter teaspoon of Weist beer nutrient. Let it cool, got it down to about 68 Fahrenheit, dumped it in with the, what little bit of yeast and beer was in there, threw my stir bar in there, threw it on top of my multi-fan series. If you've seen that video, if not, I'll put it up there, but Pretty much the world's easiest stir plates to make. They do an amazing job. They are designed more for one liter mason jars. You can get away with two liter, but I wouldn't go crazy on the liquid side. I will say one of the subscribers showed me a way that I can get probably to four liters, but definitely two and three liters with quite a bit of liquid in there. I just never even thought about it. It was so simple. It was actually doing less work than what I did to make that. And that was super easy, super inexpensive. So I made the yeast starter. I poured it in here and I let this go for 24 hours on the stir plate, not a big deal, boom. After 24 hours, I pulled it off, I cold crashed it for a night, then I dumped off what excess beer I could, lost a little yeast, not too much, and I made another eight ounces of spring water, another 0.875 of dry malt extract, another eight to a quarter teaspoon of Weist, heated it up, stirred it, got it going, cooled it down, drained off, like I said, any excess liquid I could, did the second starter, let that run 24 hours. This has been cold crashing for a few days and I have enough for what I want. But if I was going to do enough to do a five gallon batch, I probably would have done at least two more yeast starters, maybe five yeast starters, just to build that yeast up and get a 
good slurry. I mean, just a good quantity of yeast so I could do a nice five gallon pitch or six gallon either way for batches. But not finished. Here's what we're going to do. And this is gonna be a part two you'll have to watch. I am going to take that yeast from Weyerbacher, Mary Monks, and I'm gonna remake this beer. I've been looking all over the net. I found the recipe and it came from the actual brewery. It was on homebrew talk and can't guarantee it, but it looked pretty legit. So basically I'm gonna reproduce that beer, but I'm gonna do it in a small batch. So we're gonna to get to use this, do my one gallon. This is all we're gonna need for a one gallon batch. It's Pilsner. I'm gonna to have to add some corn sugar, debating on table sugar, but corn sugar probably, I got plenty of it. And we're going to reproduce this and I'm gonna go from grind, mash, boil, fermentation, chill, carbonate, drink in the next video. We'll do the whole thing in the next video. I won't just leave you hanging until we get it done and ready to go. It's a one gallon, you know? And we're gonna do it old school style. So, so you're definitely gonna to wanna to watch that. But super easy, anytime you find a, a bottle that's been bottle conditioned, remember I told you there's no guarantees due to temperatures and exposure and things like that, but there's a good chance you can get that yeast from it. And even if it's not bottle conditioned, I'm told some of them don't filter their beer, it's unfiltered, which means you might be able to pull the yeast out of that too. Maybe you have to do a few extra yeast starters, but you'll get there. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, definitely appreciate it.